Shabbat Shalom, Israel. Let us give praise to the Heavenly Father, Yah. Heavenly Father, Yah, we humbly approach you in prayer at this time, Father, to give you praise and to give you thanks for this day. Father, we thank you for your Shabbat. Father, it is a day uh, to reflect upon you, to reflect upon your words. We recognize that you have given your children laws, Heavenly Father, and you have given your children prophets. And the scripture says that uh, to the law and to the prophets, if they speak not according to this word, Father, we know that these words belong to you based upon the results that it has in our lives and based upon the prophecy, Heavenly Father, uh, nothing can match that. And so we pray for your understanding, Heavenly Father, as we are in this um, late hour. Heavenly Father, yeah, your son walked this earth um, almost 2,000 years ago. And uh, it's been a quite a while for many of the things that uh, have been prophesied in Scripture. Heavenly Father, yeah, we know that the time is short and we see the, uh, the plagues and the things that uh, were described that are coming upon the earth. And Heavenly Father, yeah, we pray and we ask that you continue to give us enlightenment, that you direct our steps. Father, forgive us where we are and fall short. Uh, we ask that you bless your people, Heavenly Father, yeah, and that you continue to wake us up. Father Yah, we love you. We come before you on your day in the name of your son, Yeshua, Yahweh Shai Mashiach. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Israel, uh, the book of Ezekiel uh, chapter 15 is a very, very short chapter. And so we're going to do a review of chapter 14 uh, that we covered last week uh, before we read that very short chapter of uh, chapter 15, Ezekiel 15. And so in last week's lesson, uh, we talked about the elders of Israel. These are the ancients that the Heavenly Father Yah calls them. These are men who should know better. Yehezkel said that he was taken up in the spirit and that he saw that the elders, the ancients, the men that should know better, he saw them worshiping idols. The worshiping of idols is the worshiping of gods that are made out of wood and stone. Um, that is so important, Israel, because the Heavenly Father Yah, he chose a nation of people, the God of heaven. Okay, the, the creator of heaven and earth. He chose a people unto himself. He revealed himself unto those people through his prophets. He gave them his words. He gave them his instruction. Okay, and those people turned away from him. They turned away from him and they began to do what the other nations have done. They began to worship gods that are made out of wood and stone, gods that are made out of the hands of men. They turned away from the creator of heaven and earth. Again, these are the ancients. These are the elders. The Heavenly Father, Yah, said that they that they speak out of their own imagination and that they speak out of their own hearts. He called them false prophets. Israel, we also learned about we also learned about um, heart idols. Idolatry is not just the worshiping of gods that are made out of wood and stone. But idolatry is yet even something more. Let's go back to the book of Colossians chapter 3. And let's read about that. The book of Colossians chapter 3. The book of Colossians chapter 3. Why don't you read verse 5 for me, Ms. Zion? Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. The scripture says to mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. That word mortify means to put to death. Israel, some things have to be put to death. Um, we can't try to find a right way to do the wrong thing. I remember looking at a case uh, with, in which uh, one of the professional football players, um, they got caught up in a rape trial. And uh, as the case uh, went on, it was found out that many of these men were married and they bought a house. Um, where they could take the um, fans, if you will, some of the some of the females that were really coming after these uh, NFL players. And so they bought a, they bought a property. Many of the uh, team members went together and brought and bought a property where they could take their women to. And so um, during the rape trial, uh, one of the players mentioned that 
you know, we know that cheating on your wife is wrong, but they said we were just trying to find a right way to do the wrong thing, to do that discreetly, to do that in privacy. Well, the Heavenly Father, Yah, said to mortify, that means to put to death. We can't find a right way to do the wrong thing. Um, the church, many, many teach in the church to come as you are. We have to put away the filth of the flesh, and we're going to talk a little bit about what some of those things that are. So he says to mortify, therefore, your, your members which are upon the earth. He said fornication. What is that? Fornication is not just uh, physical, but it's also spiritual. So remember that these elders, these ancients, they were worshiping gods that were made out of wood and stone, gods that, that, come, that were created from the hands of man. And the Heavenly Father, Yah, the creator of heaven and earth, he revealed himself unto a people and they turned their backs on him like that and they began to worship the gods of the other nations. That's spiritual fornication. That's spiritual adultery. So fornication is also in the physical sense. Um, the world would refer to it as casual sex. The Heavenly Father, Yah, said to take a wife, take a husband. Uh, when we look at... Um, fornication, we look at sex in itself, the Heavenly Father, Yah, He ordained that. He created that. He, he, he commanded and He said, be fruitful and become many. So it's not something that the Heavenly Father, Yah, wants to um, take away from us. Again, He created it. He just gave us instructions on how to go about doing that. And His, his instructions are fair and His instructions are righteous. Um, so He says, mortify fornication. He said, mortify uncleanness. What is that? What is uncleanness? Uncleanness falls into a large category. When we think about the opposite of unclean, that would be clean. And what's the opposite of clean? Dirty. Let's take food, for example. If you saw a deer that was roadkill and is laying out there with his guts uh, strewn all over the road, you would see vultures and buzzards and they would descend upon that carcass and they'd sit there and eat it. Okay, would you eat a vulture? Would you eat a buzzard? Why not? The reason why is because it's an unclean animal. If you eat that vulture and you eat that buzzard, you're eating, you're eating what it's eating. Okay, it's unclean. You look at some dogs, uh, many species of dogs, they'll, they'll eat their own waste. Would you eat a dog? Some do, some, many Asian countries do, but would you eat a dog? Okay. Uh, so in the same way that what we take into our mouth and that goes into our body, in the same way that that can be unclean, what you take into your mind comes into your mind. It, it, uh, it's processed. Your thoughts are processed. Okay. And then it becomes a spoken word and then it becomes manifest. What you're taking into your mind can be unclean. We could give many examples of that, of what is unclean. Would you say that pornography, would you say that that would be clean or unclean? What are you taking into your mind? Okay. If I sat here and I was, or not me, but a man was looking at another man's wife and thinking about having relations with her, would that be clean? Would that be unclean? If a woman is looking at another man uh, and she has a husband, would that be clean or would that be unclean? What, what about your daughter? Let's say you have a 14, 15 year old daughter and a man is looking at her, would that be considered clean or unclean? And he's sitting there with a wife. So that goes on and on and on and on. And the spirit is our guide. The Heavenly Father, Yah, speaks to us through our consciousness. You know what is clean and you know what is unclean. The Heavenly Father, Yah, has given laws and he's given instructions to tell you if you don't know. Inordinate affection. That word inordinate means to means excessive. So the scriptures is talking about lust, inordinate, excessive uh, affection. That can be translated across many different things. That could be food. Have you ever seen a person that eats and does not get enough? That's considered gluttony. Um, alcohol, a person can drink and never get enough, okay? Uh, no matter what it is, anything that we are doing and we can't stop it, it has that type of mastery over us that you become a slave to it. Okay, according to the scriptures, inordinate affection is something that we must put to death. Okay, we must put to death evil con con concupiscence. The word, the word is a tongue tire. Concupiscence, evil concupiscence. That word concupiscence means strong sexual desires. So the Heavenly Father, Yah is really focusing on that point. 
we must put to death strong sexual desires. Again, there's nothing wrong with sex. The Heavenly Father created it. He ordained it. He blessed it. He said, be fruitful, become many. We're talking about, let's, let's imagine, um, we don't even have to imagine it. Let's look at the world that we live in. Okay, you see many children that are popping up on milk carton box, uh, boxes and, and uh, they're flashing on the news. We live in this world in which people will snatch up your children, okay, and force them into sex slavery. Why? Because they have no self-control. And this is what happens when you live in a society that loses control like that. This is evil concupiscence, okay? Evil sexual desires. I mean, there's nothing wrong with, with uh, sexual desires, but the Heavenly Father God is talking about inappropriate sexual desires. Because we have those inappropriate sexual desires, now you got kids that are going up missing because, because men can't control themselves and they'll snatch your kid up, okay, and force them into a life of slavery because they can't get enough, okay? You, now you have baby's mamas, okay? You have a, a woman that's got 10 kids by 20 different men, okay? You have all, t now you have sexual diseases, okay, that's transferred from one person to the next person to the next person. The complications go on and on and on because of evil sexual desires. The Heavenly Father Yah has commanded you as a people to be better than that, okay? Nations are built by families, okay? Not by broken homes. So this is evil concupiscence. The Heavenly Father Yah said, put that to death. Um, and covetousness, okay? Covetousness is greed, okay? If, if I like sports cars. But I'm not going to go and kill you and take your sports car. But some people will do that. Some people will take your money. They will kill you, take your life, and take your money. They want your house, okay? I want to live like that. I want that car, okay? I want your woman. I want your husband. It's been done. I want your, your, your inheritance, and I can't wait for it. So some people will kill you just to get you out of the way. That's covetousness. That's wanting something that does not belong to you. The Heavenly Father, Yah said, put to death. Okay, put to death fornication, put to death uncleanness, put to death inordinate affection, put to death evil concupiscence, put to death covetousness, which is idolatry. These are idols of the heart. It's more than just worshiping gods of wood and stone. Okay, it's also the idols of the heart. And the Heavenly Father Yah said, get rid of that. The men of Israel, back during the time of Jehezkel, they worshipped idols. You worship idols today too, Israel. Let's go back to the book of Ezekiel. We learned that we must repent from those things, Israel. And we learned that um, that when we, when we sin against the Heavenly Father, Yah, that we separate ourselves from him. Let's go back to the book of Isaiah, chapter 59. The book of Isaiah, chapter 59. We'll read verses 1 and 2. Behold, Yah's hand is not shortened, that it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated between you and your father, and your sins have hid his face from you. Israel, we learned that when we sin against the Heavenly Father, Yah, that we separate ourselves from him. Imagine that there is a line. The Heavenly Father, Yah, has a line. Okay, And when we are not in prayer, and when we are not um, in his word, when we are not in his spirit, there's a line and we just continue to drift further and further and further and further away from that line. And the more that we move away from Yah's line, the further we get from him and the darker it gets. OK, the more deader we become. The scripture says that my words are spirit and they are life. So when we move closer to the words of the Heavenly Father, Yah, when we move closer to prayer in him, we move back to life. And let me tell you something, when you're moving away from the Heavenly Father, Yah, there's nothing that can satisfy what's missing, okay? There's not enough alcohol, there's not enough cigarettes, okay? There's not enough sex, there's not enough drugs, there's not enough money, there's not enough partying, 
okay? You party all day, every day, it begins to sound like noise to you, okay? There's not enough of all those things. They're unfulfilling. The only thing that's going to fulfill you and root you um, in the spirit of Yah is returning back to him. So when we sin against the Heavenly Father, Yah, we separate ourselves from him. And to separate ourselves from him is to die. Okay, And to return unto him is to give life. So we must repent. We must come back. And that's what repent means. It means to turn around. Turn from the way in which you're going and come back to your father. Here's well in the book of Ezekiel, we learned that um, the Heavenly Father Yah said that if the prophet be deceived when he have spoken a thing, he said, I, Yahweh, have deceived that prophet. We learned that the Heavenly Father Yah will do that to you. We learned that he'll send you strong delusions, okay? And this is why we must be careful about all the things that we're believing in, in uh, when it comes to religion today. Remember, Yah did not give us a religion. He gave the Torah, okay? He gave the law of instructions, okay? He gave the prophets, he gave his word, okay? He didn't give you a religion. You got religion from the world, okay? So the Heavenly Father Yah said that if you turn from him, you separate from him, okay? And you continue to follow after the things of the world, he said, he'll send you a strong delusion. He said, I will deceive. I, I've deceived that prophet. So we must be careful of that. Here's what we learned about four score plagues. The Heavenly Father, Yah, he sent the famine. He sent the pestilence. Okay. He sent the sword. Okay. And he sent the beast upon the lands. Why? Because your father is nothing to play with. Let's go to the book of Proverbs chapter three, verse 12. Proverbs 3.12. Okay. For whom Yah loveth, he correcteth, even as a father, the son in whom he delighteth. Israel, the reason that we're reading about this it's because we're remembering what the Heavenly Father Yah did during the time of Yehezkel. Remember that Yehezkel, like Daniel, was in Babylon in captivity, just like you're scattered around the four corners of the earth today. You've gotten very comfortable. You think that the places that you live in, that you think that they're home, but it's not your home. It's not your rest. You, are, you have been scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. So we're remembering what the Heavenly Father Yah did then because the Most High says, I change not. He said, I'm the same today. I'm the same yesterday. I'm the same tomorrow. So this is why we're remembering. This is why we have to take some time. And the Shabbat is a good time for us to reflect on the words of the Heavenly Father Yah because they keep us rooted. They stop, it stops us from going too far. Okay, We spent all of our time and all of our week chasing after the things of this world. We have to take some time to come back to that line. We have to remember the things that the Heavenly Father Yah has instructed us. And the Heavenly Father Yah, he sent the pestilence. He sent the sword. He sent famine. He sent the beast to destroy Jerusalem because of their idolatry. Okay. And so you might say, well, wow, that's pretty harsh. The Heavenly Father Yah would do that for a people that he says that he loves. But the Heavenly Father Yah said that I discipline those that I love. It would be improper to allow your child to just run around wild. The Heavenly Father Yah has nothing to play with. He said, I discipline those that I love. If he, if he disciplined the children of Israel then, what do you think he's going to do today? Or what do you think he is doing today? Okay. The Heavenly Father Yah, he disciplined, the, he disciplined Israel then. He's disciplining you now. Okay. We learned Israel, that the scriptures, um, he said in verse 23 of chapter 14, he said, and they shall comfort you when you see their ways uh, and their doings. He speak, he's speaking about the remnant of the people that he would save. And he said, and ye shall know that I have not done without cause all that I have done in it, saith the Lord Yah. The Heavenly Father Yah said, when it comes to your behavior, he said, you were so bad. He said, not even Noah, not even Daniel, okay, um, and not even Job. 
He said, if they were, if they were there in the land at that time, he said, not, he said, only they would be saved. They, nobody else could, would even be saved. Okay. And so the heavenly father, Yah said, it's not without cause that I'm going to bring this destruction upon you, but I'm going to leave a remnant. Let's go to the book of Deuteronomy 32, chapter, uh, verse 36. He said, it's not without cause that I'm going to do this to you. The heavenly father, Yah is justified in what he's going to do. And he's given you plenty of time to get it right. Okay. So when he acts, you know, many people cry out and they say, oh, God, everybody remembers uh, that there's a power that's greater than them when all heaven breaks loose in their life. They remember then that there's a that there's, that there's a most high. The Heavenly Father, yes, said you will reap what you sow and it will not be without cause. Uh, the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32 and um, read 36 through 30. Nine uh, through 40, 36 through 40. For Yah shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants when he seeth that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, where are their gods, their rock in whom they trusted? The Heavenly Father Yah said that he's going to judge his people when their power is gone. In other words, the Heavenly Father Yah, he's going to bring pestilence. He's going to bring famine. He's going to bring the sword. He's going to he's going to bring the beast. OK, that's what he did back then. And he's going to continue to to bring punishment to you until you wake up. OK, because that's all that you understand. So the Heavenly Father God is going to do that until your power is gone. Now you're saying, why? You know, why? Why is it people? Is Why does it have to be that way? You know? Why can't we have our own land or why can't why are we always oppressed? Why are why do all, why do these bad things keep happening to us as a people? Why are our neighborhoods look like that? Why do I nobody even wants to be around our children, our children, uh, the, the children of Israel. Uh, they act like they act really wild. OK, and many people don't even want to be around them because they say they don't know how to act. So, so we ask you, why are these things happening to us? You know, why are our neighborhoods affected with these ills? The Heavenly Father God said, I'm going to bring destruction. I'm going to bring punishment upon you until all your power is used up because that's what you understand. And then you turn to him and you say, oh, God, help me. OK, so he says. Um, and uh, would you leave off at 37? Oh, then the Heavenly Father asked a question. He said, and he shall say, where are their gods, their rock and whom they trusted? Back then, they were worshiping idols of wood and stone. But think about all the things that are in your heart right now. Okay, all the lust that's in your heart, all the all the money that you're chasing, uh, all the sex that you want, all the partying that you want, all the drugs that you want, all the idols of your heart. The Heavenly Father, Yah is saying, we're going to see how, where that gets you. Okay, when all of that is gone and all of that is taken taken away, we're going to find out where that's going to get you. Read on. Verse 38, which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drink the wine of their drink offerings. Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. Let all those idols of your heart, all those things that you that I told you to put away and to seek after me. Let's see if that helps you. OK, this is what the Heavenly Father God is saying. Read on. Verse 39, see now that I even I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill and I make alive. I wound and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. There are no other gods, okay? The gods of wood and stone, all these religions that you're believing in, okay? All the idols of your heart. You said there is no God but me, okay? I kill, I wound, I make alive. He said, there is none but me. I am he. Okay. The heavenly father, Yah, he is our heir. He's our food. He's our water. He's our salvation. Okay. Now let's go into the book of Ezekiel chapter 15. Very short chapter. And um, how about I read it? I will read it and then I'll we'll go back and explain it. And then I'll have you read verse by verse as we break it down. Okay. The book of Ezekiel chapter 15 and the word of Yahweh came unto me saying, son of man, 
what is the vine tree more than any tree? Or than a branch which is among the trees of the forest? Shall wood be taken to do any work? Or will men make a pen of it to hang any vessel thereon? Behold, it is cast into the fire for fuel. The fire devoureth both the ends of it, and the midst of it is burned. Is it meat for any work? Behold, when it was whole, it was meat for no work. How much less shall it be meat for any work, when the fire hath devoured it, and it is burned? Therefore thus saith the Lord Yah, As the vine tree among the trees of the forest, which I have given to the fire for fuel, so will I give the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and I will set my face against them, and they shall go out from one fire, and another fire shall devour them. And ye shall know that I am Jehovah when I set my face against them, and I will make the land desolate because they have committed a trespass, saith the Lord Yah. Okay, so let's go back and let's read it again, and we're going to break this down. The Heavenly Father, uh, start at... Um, Read one and two again, sweetie. Okay. And the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Son of man, what is the vine tree more than any tree, or than a branch which is among the trees of the forest? Israel, take a look at this video concerning the vine tree. Now, today's video is going to be a little different. I will be talking about an invasive species and a native one, but this video is not going to focus on identification. It's more going to focus on a specific tree, which is this one right here. Now, I've known about this area for some time. It's a grove with several trees, with this being the biggest, and what's notable is there are so many large vines all around it. Now, I have known for some time now the rough identity of these vines. This is a native grapevine, and these here are bittersweet vines. Unfortunately, there are two species of bittersweet, and for the longest time I couldn't tell which was the native one and which is the invasive one. The information on the internet is, to put it mildly, absolutely terrible, and I just couldn't find any solid identifying characteristics. Now, whether native, invasive, or introduced, all vines have the potential to kill trees. Vines like this are only really using the tree as a means to get up to higher branches, to get more sunlight, and as a means of support. The fact that they kill the trees in the process, or potentially can, is actually an unfortunate byproduct, but it is what occurs. In the case of dead trees and native vines, the damage is done. And even if you had a preference for the tree, the vine is still native to this area, it's still a part of nature, and you should leave it alone. For live trees, you have a choice to make. Do you interfere and have the tree live and thrive, or do you not interfere and let nature run its course, whatever that may be? Simply running around killing vines to save trees is quite a bit irresponsible if you don't know what vines you're killing and whether you're actually saving the tree or not. And there lies the problem. I had really no way of knowing whether this vine was native or invasive. The Heavenly Father, Yah, he asked a question. He said, what is the vine tree uh, more than any other tree? The vine tree is an invasive species, okay? As we've just seen, the vine tree, um, it, it's, it uses other host trees to just to even rise up to get some sunlight, okay? And it takes away the strength of the other tree and it kills many trees. It's, it's an invasive species. So back during the time of Yehezkel, just like today, they didn't really use the vine tree, okay? It was, it was, it was considered nothing. So he said, what is, what is the vine tree among, among the trees of the forest, okay? He said more than any tree or than a branch which is, which is, among, the tree, uh, which is among the trees of the forest. W what is the vine tree? It's nothing. It's an invasive species, okay? What is it good for? Verses uh, 3 and 4. Shall wood be taken thereof to do any work? Or will men take a pen of it to hang any vessels thereon? The Heavenly Father, Yah, he asked, he said, um, 
so will you take wood from the vine tree to do any work? Think about the cedar tree or the chestnut tree or an oak tree and the uh, beautiful work that's made out of those trees. Are you going to take a vine tree and do that? Is it good for any work like that? This is what the Heavenly Father Yah is saying. He said, or will, will men take a pin of it to hang any vessel? Um, will you make pegs out of it or will you make a... a um, a pin, if you will, okay, out of it um, to to hang things on a wall with. Is it what is it good for? Is it good for anything? Verses uh, five and six. Behold, when it was whole, it was meat for no work. How much less shall it be meat yet for any work? When the fire hath devoured it and it is burned. When when that tree was whole, whole. It wasn't like the oak tree, the chestnut tree, or or um, any other good tree. It was it was not good for any work. Okay, so he said, "How much more so when it's thrown into the fire?" Okay, that's 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 what it's good for 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 fuel for a fire. Verse six. Therefore, thus said the master Yahweh, as the vine tree among the trees of the forest, which I have given to the fire for fuel so will I give the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Because of your idolatry, remember, that's more than just worshiping gods of wood and stone, following after the other nations and believing in what they believe in. The Heavenly Father, Yah didn't even reveal himself to them. He chose you and you're following after them, okay? No wonder he sent the destruction, the pestilence, the sword, the famine, the beast, okay? No wonder he did that. Um, he said, you, you're acting like, you, to me, you're like that vine tree, okay? You, you're good for nothing but fuel in the fire, okay? This is what the Heavenly Father, Yah, is saying. And just like that vine tree, you're going to be devoured and you're going to be burned, okay? Finish it up. Verse 7, and I will set my face against them. They shall go out from one fire and another fire shall devour them. And ye shall know that I am Yah when I set my face against them. And I will make the land desolate because they have committed a trespass, saith the master Yah. Israel, let's take a look at this video. Get out of the thing. Is that the one for me? No. Get a video, Ash. Mm. Look at the tight croc's tail. Mm -hmm. Here's the croc. That's not so Oh, shame. Did you get the take down? No. Did you change it to cover your legs? Mm -hmm. Go, 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 go. go. No. Shame. Don't go deeper. It's obviously holding it by its leg. There's a leopard right in down this bush. There's a leopard right in down this bush. Yeah, and it goes straight with the leopard's jaw. Pity we weren't just a bit further forward. Yeah, the ghost is going up the tree. Look at the leopard's jaw. Okay, it's coming down. Get a bit of it. Just like the deer, he was in peril. He was, he was uh, 
in the water and the crocodile, he escaped the, the uh, jaws of the crocodile only to go into the jaws of the uh, leopard, okay? And the Heavenly Father, Yah, says that you are going to be like that, that you're going to go from one fire unto the next. And the Heavenly Father, Yah, is going to continue to discipline you, and he's going to continue to discipline you until you get it right, until you begin to understand, because that's all that, that makes you to understand. That's the reason why the Heavenly Father, Yah, does that. Remember that he said, I, I discipline those that I love. Let's go to the book of... Um, Jeremiah chapter 11, we'll read verse 16. Jeremiah chapter 11. And uh, let's, start at, let's start at verse 16. Yeah, I call thy name a green olive tree, fair and of goodly fruit. The heavenly father, Yah. Yahweh, he's talking about Yisrael. Okay, he said, I call thy name a green olive tree. That's what the Heavenly Father Yah, uh, that's what he thought of you. That's what he thinks of you. He said, fair and of goodly fruit. Now he's referring to you as a vine, nothing more than an invasive species that's good for the fire. Okay, remember, we talked about this before. The Heavenly Father Yah, he compares men to trees. Remember that when uh, Nebuchadnezzar, remember he had a horrible dream and he came unto Daniel and Daniel told him I can interpret that dream. And he dreamt about a large tree that went up into the heavens and that tree was hewn down, it was cut down and a band was placed around it. Remember when Daniel spoke unto the Heavenly Father Yah, he told him, tell Nebuchadnezzar, he said that you are that tree. Remember that in the book of Matthew, um, our Lord and Master, Yeshua, Yahweh Shai Mashiach, Remember that he said that, um, he said, ye shall know a tree by its fruit. Do you think that he's talking about fruit or talking about trees? He's talking about men. He said, ye shall know a tree by its fruit. He's talking about men. In the book of Isaiah, the scriptures refers to you, Israel, as trees of righteousness. Okay? And on and on and on, the scriptures refers to men as trees the heavenly father Yah referred to you as a green olive tree goodly now he's referring to you as a vine because of your idolatry let's continue to read on verse 17 for yah of hosts that planted thee hath pronounced evil against thee for the evil of the house of israel and of the house of yehuda which they have done against themselves to provoke me to anger in offering incense to Baal. Jeremiah saw it in, during his time. He said that uh, Yahweh, that planted thee, that made you a green olive tree, he said he's pronounced evil against thee for the evil of the house of Israel and for the house of Yehuda. Okay? All 12 tribes of Israel. Because during his time, they were worshiping Baal. Who are you worshiping today? Okay? And verse, uh, let's finish it out, verse 18. And Yah hath given me knowledge of it, and I know it. Then thou showest me their doings. The Heavenly Father, Yah, he sees your doings, Israel. So in conclusion, again, we talked, we went through a review of the book of Ezekiel chapter 14. The ancients and the elders, they know better. They practice idolatry. We learned that idolatry is more than just uh, the physical worshiping of idols, but we also have idols of the heart. And the Heavenly Father, Yah, outlined those things. He said, which is idolatry? We learned that we must repent and we must come back to our Heavenly Father. We learned that the Heavenly Father, Yah, did it back then, and he's going to do it, and he is doing it, and is going to do it yet to this day to bring destruction. And this is the reason why we come before you in the Shabbat, to learn about his words uh, so that we stay close to that line and we don't continue to drift away from it. It's like a person being in the water, like being in the ocean. You got to always be treading. You may not be able to swim for full, at full power, but you better at least be treading because if you don't, you're going to continue to drift and drift and drift. And the more that you drift away from the Heavenly Father, Yah, the more lifeless, the deader you become. You must repent and turn back to him and you must come back to life. The Heavenly Father Yah said he's going to bring that destruction not without cause. He disciplines those that he loves. Israel, we read that you were, you are, the Heavenly Father Yah made you as a green olive tree. Goodly, okay? But because of your behavior, 
he compares you now to a vine, which is good for nothing but fuel for the fire. That's our lesson for the day, Israel. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.